I'm just doing a quick audit of a student's account. This is the first time I've logged into their account. The date range I've set is all time from February 18th to today, March the 7th. I can see that none of the ads are running at the minute. They're all paused, all the campaigns are paused. I'm set to look at all campaigns. I can see that it's basically two campaigns and only one of them has got any clicks and impressions. If I click on the dimensions tab, I can see that the campaign started on February the 18th and ran up to February the 21st. Normally I have them in reverse order so that the newest stuff is to the top. So if you imagine this was going for months, then you want to see the newest stuff to the top because it's the most useful. We go back to campaigns and we click into the campaign that has had data. And first off, I like the naming convention here. LC I think means location so he's IP targeting Atlanta the first campaign is the services the second campaign is the brand name and the created date is actually in the name of the campaign so we can see when it started uh, so I didn't actually have to go and click on dimensions to find that out and this is handy if sometimes you want to clone a campaign and pause the original campaign and run the clone if you have the slash created equals date in that format of year 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 MMDD the year, then the month, and then the day, then they will all get sorted nicely when you sort by campaign name. And you'll see the older campaigns, then the newer, then the newer, then the newer, and you can see all the stats relating to them and see how things have progressed. Sometimes if I'm gonna make a change to a campaign and it's kind of a, it's a big change, I don't make a change to the actual campaign. I make a copy of the campaign and change the copy. Pause the original campaign, which means if things go wrong, I can pause the new campaign and unpause the old one and go back to the previous position. So I call that a fallback position. We can roll back to the fallback position. If I click into that campaign, you can see that we're running five ad groups and one of them has had all the volume. Let's go back to a campaign level. It's something I'd normally do immediately is I don't like the default columns that you get. I will change the columns. And these, these are the ones I normally have. First off, I get rid of campaign type and subtype. I don't need them. Then I'm interested in impressions, then clicks, then CTR makes sense. The CTR depends on the average position. The average position depends on your cost per click. And then that gives us a cost. So they make sense. If you had conversion tracking on, I'd add conversion metrics here, conversions, cost per conversion and conversion rate. And then I'm going to add competitive metrics because we're only running search campaigns at the moment. I'm just going to add the search metrics and apply that. So now we've got impressions, then clicks, our CTR average position. And we can see that we are running at a 67% impression share and, and we lost 10% of impression share due to the budget. The budget it looks well the budget currently is five dollars a day that just because we lost 10.23 percent doesn't mean we lost it at that five dollars maybe that was set to one dollar maybe it's in, been increased to five dollars i guess not normally what you do if you don't want to lose impression share due to budget you'd either drop your bids so that you're spending less than five dollars a day and not hitting the budget cap or you increase the budget so if I click into add groups, I normally do exactly the same thing with the columns. I just get rid of those two, move that to there, average position to there, and add the competitive metrics. Apply. And we can see that one of the add groups is getting all the all the volume. Click into that add group. We can now see the keywords. Again, I'm going to adjust the keywords, columns. Uh, I'll add the attributes as well. Quite like to see the quality score and then these ones. And then add all these. So only one keyword is getting all the volume. And if we, hold on, what's going on here? It's all in one ad group. So that's not the convention I'd normally have we've got this keyword is different from this keyword and they're all different these keywords and they're all in the same ad group they should all be in their own ad group I, I have hidden what the keywords are because it's confidential but imagine it was plumbers 
and this first keyword was plumbers Dublin, the second keyword was plumbers Rathmines and area within Dublin. We want them in separate ad groups because the, when somebody types in plumbers Dublin, we want to show the ad for plumbers Dublin. When someone types in the plumbers Rathmines, we want to show the ad for plumbers Rathmines. So if we have a look at the ads, there's one ad and it's to do with Atlanta. So that's great for the person who searched for Atlanta, which is this top one. But this search here, the third one is not Atlanta, it's another location. So that person who types in plumbers, another location that's not Atlanta is going to see the ad for plumbers Atlanta. This is why you have to create one keyword per ad group and make sure that the ad then matches the keyword in the ad group. Um, I'll just quickly do an audit of the account, uh, sorry, the campaign. So search network only, all features, yep. Google search, the, the search partners is turned off. All devices targeting the whole of the country. Okay, if it's targeting the whole of the country, then I would call that location equals US, not Atlanta. Location op options, advanced. People in my targeted location, yep, the middle one. All languages, yep. $5 delivery method at, uh, accelerated, rotating definitely. So they're all good. It's just that if you're targeting the whole of the country, then I personally would put that into my naming convention so that I know that I'm targeting the whole of the US. Me personally, I, I have that as being IP equals US. I'm IP targeting the whole of the US. And that makes sense for this campaign because each of these keywords has the service that somebody's looking for and then a location. So if somebody's in New York looking for a plumber in Atlanta, we don't know why, maybe they've got a rental property there, maybe their parents are there and need a plumber or wife's there, whatever reason, but they're in New York looking for a plumber in Atlanta, then we want the ad to show. If we were running a campaign where we didn't insist they had a location in the search term, so they've just typed in plumber, for instance, or emergency plumber, then we would IP target Atlanta in which case that is a second style of campaign. I would then have IP equals Atlanta and then the services in that campaign would be emergency plumber, plumbers, boiler repairs, all those kinds of words without location in the keyword. Okay, uh, so we looked at the ad. Again, I changed the columns here. Get rid of stuff we don't need. Just order it slightly different. And I also do the same on the dimensions tab. You should only have to do this once, although sometimes I spot it just goes back. I don't know why. Somebody in Google mentioned it as well, one of my Google reps. So let's have a just a look. The last four, so it only ran for four days. And we can see the the impressions remained consistent. We don't know whether all those keywords were added at the same time. It might be that they were, you know, a few more keywords are added later. Actually, only one keyword is getting all the volume. So that's, this is all the stats for the one keyword. The impression share dropped that day, came back up Monday. Interesting. Can't, can't learn anything from these stats. Okay. The lost impression share due to budget was 30% on the Monday. If the budget stayed the same at $5 a day, then what this means is there were a lot more searches on the Monday. So 28 impressions is 45% impression share, which means 28 is 45%. So divide 28 by 0.45 will give us whatever. I don't know, maybe 60 actual searches. Whereas this 35 on the Tuesday was 83%. So maybe there was 40 actual searches that day and 60 that day. And we hit a limit. We hit the budget, the $5 budget when it went slightly over on the Monday. And that's why we stopped showing. That's why we got a, a search impression share of 45% because mostly we lost, we lost 30% due to hitting the budget. We have lost some impression share due to our ad rank, which basically means we, if we bid a lot more, we should get 100% impression share or, or close to it, as long as we don't, we're not hitting budget.
So that's how I interpret those stats. If much too early days to really tell what's going on. The average position changed, but look, we haven't even done a full week yet. Maybe there's seasonality during the week. Some competitors don't bother bidding at the weekend, but but do bid Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Um, cost per click is going up and down. Look, only four days, not enough data. But what I will do, this is something I would often do, I'll download that data into Excel, select that, double click to maximize, uh, best fit all the columns. You can see all the days and there's a total there i'll just delete the total don't really need that don't really need that delete that okay so we've got impressions and search impression share so what i can do is equals that divided by that Oops, wrong way. I always get that wrong. Sorted in, God knows what order that's sorted in. So I just sort that in reverse order. So that's format. Okay, that was the Monday. There were 62 estimated searches compared to 34 on the Saturday. So even with a few days of data, it looks like twice as many people search on a Monday compared to a Saturday. The main issue with the account so far is that there's one ad group and lots of keywords in the ad group and one ad. There should be lots of ad groups. One keyword, one ad per ad group.